Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, you are God. The way, the truth, and the life. We are here in your presence, God. Looking into the eternal word of God that is able to save our soul, our emotions. Keep us on a straight road, Lord. Speak, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Remain standing. Go in your Bible. I'm going to go in a book of Ezra. Don't even know when was the last time you talked to him. When you go to heaven, Ezra is going to come and slap you. I say, you never talked to me? And Nehemiah. Ezra, then Nehemiah. Or in my language, you call it Nehemiah. I don't care how you call it, as long as you go there. Book of Ezra, 7th chapter. And for the sake of time, I'm not going to read the first few words. First seven words. But watch it. Ezra, son of this, son of this, son of this, son of this, son of this. Huh? It goes all the way to high priest Aaron. He is a scribe. He's a scholar of the scripture. Let us go. Ezra 7th chapter and verse 10. This was because Ezra had determined to study and obey the law of the Lord and teach those decrees and regulation to people of Israel. Listen to me, he's a preacher. This is a job description for the one who stands behind the pulpit. Determined to study, obey the word, and teach. All right? Go to your right. Go to book of Nehemiah, the eighth chapter. Chapter one through seven. They build the wall. The wall is finished. But their lives are scattered. As a prophet of God, as a man of God, I want to bring this message because COVID-19 has scattered the lives, even of believers, all over the world. And by the grace of God, I'm going to break it down how to rebuild your life, how to rebuild your walk. Listen to me. You rebuild the wall. Now you need to rebuild your walk. Nehemiah 8 chapter. Reading from New Living Translation. In October, when Israelites had settled in their towns, all the people assembled in unified purpose at the square just inside the water gate. They asked Ezra the scribe to bring out the book of the law of Moses with the Lord, what the word? L-O-R-D, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Yahweh, Jehovah, with whom I have a relationship. Which the Lord had given for Israel to obey. So on October 8th, Israel the priest brought the book of the law before the assembly, which included men and women and all the children, old enough to understand. 
He faced the square just inside the water gate from early morning until noon. How would you like to have a six-hour service? Just a thought. Six in the morning till noon, that's six hours. Read aloud to everyone who could understand. All the people listened closely to the book of the law. Verse 4, Ezra the scribe stood on a high wooden platform. So now you know where the pulpit came from. That had been made for the occasion. To this right stood these guys, whatever all their name. Okay, verse 5. Ezra stood on a platform in full view of the people. All of you can see me. All right. When they saw him open the book, they all rose to their feet. This is the scripture why I ask always to stand when we read the word of God. There it is the basis. To respect and to honor. I know people are fighting when the national anthem is being played to sit down or not. I ain't worried about all that. My thing is this. As soon as the word of God is being read, stand up to acknowledge the final authority. Verse 6. Then Israel praised the Lord, the great God, and all people chanted, Amen and Amen. Now that's where it comes from, folks. Nothing wrong for you hollering Amen. As they lifted their hands, there is another answer. Why we have a pulpit? Why we read it loud? Why you all stand? Why you say amen? Why you lift your hand? They lifted their hands. Then they bow down and worship the Lord. Their faces to the ground. The Levites, all those guys, verse 8, they read book from the book of the law of God and clearly explained and the meaning of what was being read, helping the people understand each passage. Verse 9. Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites who were interpreting for the people said to them, Don't mourn or weep on such a day as this, for today is a sacred day before the Lord your God. For the people had been weeping as they listened to the words of God. See, we don't read Nehemiah 8, 1 through 9, and we want to preach on verse 10. And Nehemiah continued, go and celebrate with feasts, rich food, and sweet drinks, share gifts of food with people who have nothing to prepare. This is a sacred day before Lord our God. Don't be rejected and said, and that's what we preach. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. Every charismatic person knows that the joy of the Lord is your strength, but they don't know what happened before that. Go ahead and have your seats, please. So I can title this, Match Made in Heaven. You know, I'm getting creative about the titles. Because what I have noticed, listen to me, in a month of January, when I titled my message, Things to Come in 2021. Oh, Jesus, we had so many hits. And then people start fading away. That's the reason I'm going to call this match made in heaven. And so people will be thinking, oh, he talked about husband and wife. Psych. Or I can call it a perfect marriage. Here we go. Between the pulpit and the pews. Sometimes the pulpit is cold, so the pews are cold. Sometimes pulpit is hot, but the pew still stays cold. Because they don't do certain things. So today, I just want to break it down for a few minutes... What will make a perfect match made in heaven between the pulpit and the pews? Their lives were scattered. We're still talking about the book of Nehemiah. They got together and built the wall. 
family after family after family after families. But you know what? Sometimes you get so busy doing something in a natural, you forget the main important part, which is your spiritual life. And the spiritual life was scattered. How to rebuild your life and your walk? So, responsibility of the man of God or a woman of God who stands behind the pulpit. Israel 7 and 10 says, for Ezra the scribe came from line all the way from Aaron the high priest to do three things. And that's my life, that's my purpose of living and being a man of God, prophet unto the nations, prophet over the kingdom, these three things. Number one is to study the word of God. If you are not studying the word of God, get out of the pulpit. It is required that a man of God, Paul writing to his son, getting ready into the ministry, 2 Timothy 2 and 15, Paul says, study yourself to show yourself approved, finish the, unto God, not unto the people. We spend so much time to please people, trying to impress. My job is to please the one who has called me, who has sanctified me, who has separated me. Paul says in a Timothy also, huh, like a soldier, only requirement for you is, is to please the one who enlisted you. So my job, any pastor, anyone who stands here, if you have not, I didn't say read, study. I don't care, if you watch me, I don't care who is here. I am always taking notes. Because God is teaching me through anyone who stands here. I don't know everything. But in order for them to do that, they must study. When I became a pastor, my keys called Monday morning. And I was in office. And he said, wow, you cannot get a preacher in office on Monday. I said, do. Listen to me, listen to me. If you can go to work 9 to 5 or 8 to 4, how come I can just go and play golf? Or just mess around all day long? Uh-uh, folks. I put more than 40 hours a week studying, praying, waiting on God. Joshua 1 and 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. And thou shalt meditate. You know, study the word. So, marriage is give, take, receive. If it is become one way, hey folks, we are asking for trouble. Number one, study. He said he had made up his heart to study and to leave what he studied. If you ain't doing what you're preaching, shut your mouth. Get out of the pulpit. It is so very quiet in this Roman Catholic church this morning. Don't be like Pharisees. You do what I tell you to do. Mm -mm. I must leave. Huh? If I, can, I don't tithe, I cannot say to you, tithe. If I don't give to missus, I cannot say give it to missus. 
you lead by example. Every preacher standing by the pulpit must study the word of God. And thank God. Huh? So much is available on the internet. Huh? You can abuse the internet or you can use it to study. I don't know Greek and Hebrew, but there are men and women of God, huh? Click. Study it. Listen to other preachers. Because you don't know everything. Listen to this. When somebody tells you from the pulpit, do not go to listen to anybody, leave the church. You know why? They are trying to be a cult. The first sign of cult is we got the whole truth, nothing but the truth, and nobody knows but me. And they try to control you. Mm -mm. If T.D. Jakes is coming to Civic Center and I tell you not to go, something wrong with me. If Pastor David Jeremiah comes here, talk to me, folks. There are other voices. And you know, sometimes you have your own chef that you like. Well, eat his food, but you still need a pastor. Hey. All I'm saying is from the pulpit, you must study, you must live, then you should be able to teach what you have learned. If you have learned nothing, you can teach nothing. So everybody okay? So that's a half of the message. I usually preach this thing during the pastor's conference, just take an hour and teach on this thing, but we're not going to do that because I want to talk about you today. Match made in heaven. So I talked to you about pulpit. Let me talk about the pews. How many times I have stood on this pulpit and I have said over and over the word God in this church, this is the final authority. I don't care who is the president. Who is the scientist? Who is the democrat? It don't make me no difference. Huh? If you don't line up, uh, I'm done with you guys. Word of God. Word of God is the truth, the final authority. Now, so let's talk about the people. I'm going to break it down. I got about five points, 20 minutes, be good. Number one, they did... They can prepare to hear the word of God. Let me talk to you. Do you prepare to come to the house of God to worship and hear the word? Oh, no. You follow what I'm saying? You're so busy getting ready. Wait, 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 let, let me just go on. No, no, no. You got to prepare. You got to prepare. You got to prepare. Why? Because the Bible says in Matthew 5 and 6, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for the truth. You got to be hungry and thirsty. Why do you go to restaurant if you ain't hungry? Do you follow what I'm saying? You can't be fool and go to restaurant. Something wrong with you. So before you come, answer this question. Are you hungry for the word of God? Job say, I desire your word more than my necessary food. You know, when people get sick, the first sign that they are getting better is, uh, give me something to eat. Talk to me, I don't, uh, talk to the doctors. When the appetite comes back, you is on your way to recovery. But when you are hungry, you is dying. 
Come on, folks. When they're going down, baby, first thing they do is stop eating. Why? I ain't got no appetite. So you try to blend it, shove it down, they, th they don't care. Let me ask you a question. How is your appetite before you come here? If you ain't hungry, you ain't thirsty, don't come. Because as a sower, as a pastor, as a man of God, all I'm doing is scattering the seed, which is the word of God. And you tell me what kind of soil you are. Don't come and tell me. Oh, that was, mm, shut your mouth. There's nothing wrong with the word of God. There's something wrong with you and your heart. Hello? Come hungry. Come hungry. And I will resign if I don't feed you. Why? I feed you after I eat. Prepare the soil of your heart to receive the word of God. So they all gathered together. Listen to me. Why are people staying away? Because they're not hungry. And they use the excuse of COVID-19. What you all going to do? I said it. They think they have a right. They know more than the pastor. Point number two. When they came, listen to me, it was not the pastor, it was the people. Point number two, they called for the book. So when you come, if somebody is opening this and reading, and you read with them, get out of Dodge. You don't want to hear no stories. You want to hear the word of God. Point number one, they gathered together. Point number two, they called for the book, the word of God. Number three, they stayed there six to noon. I done lost you. Dr. Makachan says 19 drops of rain will keep 20 Baptists away. And especially when you got to change your clock one hour early. Because if you are hungry, you will get up and come. Talk to me. Huh? Talk to me. First of all, you don't know how to cook. So you will. That's the reason I say, folks, if we feed you here, when the Lord of God, mighty God moves in here, you have to tell somebody. Amen. Huh? Don't you say, man, let me tell you about this steakhouse, hey? Or let me tell you about this, this, this. You have no problem talking about that. How about talking about the Word of God? And don't come here looking at me. Oh, I know he'll be done at 1230, I know. They stood there from 6 to noon. Pastor Adeboe, sometime, they were all night worship and praise. When he turned 79 years old this year, they had 79 hours of straight praise and worship. What would you do? And no wonder the day I was raised, the blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear, the power of God. Power of God moves all over because they are willing to pay the price. Here we don't want to pay no price, but we want God to do in one and a half hour. Number one, they gathered because they were hungry and thirsty. Number two, they came Asking for the word of God. Number three, they came. And listen to me. And the Bible says, and they came back again. If I preach from 11 to 7 this evening, you ain't coming Wednesday or next Sunday.
and then wonder, well, we don't see signs and wonders in miracles. See, you want God to... Remember the message I, I preached that I had that little Aladdin's lamp? And you rub it when you need it. Whoo! Perfect match. Pulpit and the pews. Number four. By the way, let's go. Number one, they gathered together because they were hungry and thirsty. Number two, they called for the book, which is the word of God. Number three, they sat there for six hours. Number four, Bible says they received the word of God and they accepted the word of God. Like I have told you many times, you sit here and you do like this. Do like this. Meaning what? It don't apply to me. He needs it. When I preach about husband and wife, the wife says, Oh, I wish he was here. What about the things I told you about your, you? They receive the word of God. Proverbs 4 and 20. Attend to my word. Incline your ears. Don't let them depart out of your heart. Folks, this is the word of God. So listen to me. In order to have a match made in heaven, a perfect marriage... Do not put it on me all the responsibility. Why the church is not growing? It's the sheep that beget sheep. Take some responsibility for Covenant Family Church. Do your part. Don't blame the pastor. Or the elder, or department head, or no, no, no. How is you? Are you hungry? How is your attitude? They receive the word of God, folks. Do you receive, or you have a selective hearing? Or you sit here thinking, oh, I wish he would have heard this. Or I wish she would have heard it. Do you receive as God speaking to you through me? They gathered together. Now who is preaching? I need to bring my shotgun so we... <laughs> come on, come back. Listen, folks. Gathering. Huh? We're studying the book of Acts. And Bible says, daily. Underline the word. They gathered. Our problem is this, Pastor, you're having too many services. Every time we look around, there you go. And then you say, God, is you dead? How come miracles are not happening? Bible says, daily they were in one place with one accord, fasting and praying, taking care of each other, worshiping God, honoring the word of God, and they cannot deny the miracle that happens. Miracle doesn't happen because we're not hungry and thirsty for God. You're so wrapped up in you. I want our church to glorify God, magnify God. Dr. McCutcheon stood in this church and he said, I'm not that smart, but I'm smart enough to know if I lift his name higher, I lift him up, he will draw all men to himself. Are you lifting the name of the Lord? Every day in your life. Let me ask you a question. Do you study the book every day? Or you have the little scripture thingy on your dining table. Do, 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 do. Oh, I had my morning devotion. <laughs> and then feel good about it. Why oh, I have my devotion when I'm driving to work. I listen to this preacher. Stop lying to yourself. 
When you go into your secret place, that's you and God and nobody else. They receive the word of God. Do you receive the word of God? When you go home, when you go to work on Monday, let me ask you, do you create the atmosphere so your co-worker can wait for you to show up tomorrow? What did he say yesterday? What did you learn yesterday? But you know what? You go back and talk what everybody else is talking. They receive the word of God. My last point, number five. And they apply the word of God. Bible say they wept. They were in grief. They were in sorrow. In other words, they repented. Every Sunday, you got to adjust your life. Every Wednesday, you got to make some changes in your life. Why? Because we are talking about rebuilding your walk, rebuilding your life. And we have all in the world how to do it. But we don't. Let's go and see what he's going to say today. What kind of attitude is that? You might as well just stay home. So how come we got to come to the Bible fellowship? Because we study the word of God. And like I said, iron sharps iron. We got about 20, 22 folks. Huh? Everybody can read the same thing, different, different angle, different angle, different angle, and everybody is edified. Man, you'll be just glad that I show up on Sunday. Wow. Wow. And your life is falling apart? And we are rebuilding this? Huh? Mm -mm. Rebuild your life. They wept. There was grief and sorrows for their own life. And guess what? They said, my God, I must repent. I must repent. And then the Irmai comes. He said, look here. The circle is complete. You went away from God. God disciplined you. You repent. You come back. God restores. Full circle. But some of us, God, he blesses you. You enjoy the blessings. You walk away from God. Until you finish the circle, we haven't rebuilt our life. Nirmaya said that, Listen, it's a good day. When is a good day? You gather, you hear, you understand, you obey, you apply the word, then it's a good day. When is a good service? Oh, did you all have a good service yesterday? Yes. Why? We gathered. We called for the book, we heard the word of God, we received the word of God, we applied the word of God, it's a good service. Otherwise, you know what happened? You're going to school. You are in my class for one hour, and then you go home. You take notes, throw it on your coffee table, until next Sunday, you haven't studied. You haven't studied. So my challenge to you as a covenant family church, as we are ready to ascend to the high calling, ready to ascend what God wants to do, folks, I will do my part. I will fast. I will study. I will pray. I will do all that. But would you, can I count on you? to gather. 
word of God. Hear, understand, do it, and then when you go out, Jesus said, lift up your eyes and see the harvest is ready, ripe for the harvest. When you go to a restaurant, you were satisfied. Tell somebody else. And that's my message. A match made in heaven. Pulpit and pews. Loving each other. Taking care of each other. My last statement. The mission of this church is to glorify God in every thing that we do is to glorify God. Amen. Would you all stand, please? Lift your hands to our seven. And thank God that you were able to come. Thank God you heard the word of God. Word of God is the final authority. And today's message is trust and obey. From my heart to the heavens. I give you the glory, the honor. My Father, we bless you. You will keep my family. You will keep Covenant Family Church. You will keep us, God. And so we say, thank you, Lord. Let there be a perfect match between me as a pastor and you as a congregation. Me as an under-shepherd and you as a sheep. As I prepare the table, come and eat and be satisfied and tell someone else where you found the good food that helped you rebuild your life in your walk, in Jesus' name. May God bless you. May God keep you. No evil will come near your dwelling place. You will abide in safety. You will. Go to bed and sleep. God will watch over you. God will send his angels to lead you, guide you, sustain you, and keep you. And may God help you win the lost to the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed.